Next up, we have Yanni Nevo, the CEO and founder at Simagin. So uh, now you can view me, I guess. So again, Yoni Nevo uh, from a company named Simagin. Uh, good morning, pleasure being here. It's the first time to meet at the Augmented World Expo. It's a great show so far. Um, so we're now in the Silicon Valley, right? Uh, I actually come, Simagin, the company comes from the Silicon Valley. Does anyone know what it is? Something we call the, uh, the Silicon Valley? Uh, so Silicon Valley, the valley is a broad valley, we all know what it is, but the Vadi, that's how you call in Israel, a very small stream. So I come from Israel, uh, where we have a lot of technology and there are many focus areas uh, that, are un that are very powerful in Israel. For, and most of them, the roots come from uh, actually the defense industries, we have to defend ourselves. And so, for example, telecommunication is one strong area. And another one that's becoming more and more strong these days is actually computer vision, image processing, video processing. Um, so our team actually has its uh, R&D team, engineering team, uh, comes from really the origin of uh, the Israeli Raytheon uh, for uh, making uh, actually guided missiles. But we decided to do something more friendly with, those, uh, with this know-how and uh, technology. And our initial focus was actually to save marriages. Uh, you know the thing where, well, at least it happens to me quite a lot, my wife insists on knowing what I think about something that has to do with design. So which sofa should we take? Uh, should we take uh, the blue one or the red one or the coffee machine? Should we take the regular uh, uh, black one? Or perhaps let's be bold and try the red one on our counter. So it's an issue. I mean, what do I answer? I have no idea how to imagine that. Uh, so, if I, so either I say I don't know, she'll get angry with me afterwards, of course, or I say, of course, we'll take the blue one, and then I'll pay for it later. So in order to save money uh, with marriage counseling and stuff like that, that is really to use augmented reality uh, to help consumers uh, and help uh, shoppers in making better decisions. As you've seen today on the try-ons, we have two, one for eyewears uh, and two for additional products. Our focus is on all home and office goods, uh, and let's see if we solve a real problem, first of all. So uh, when you look at conversion rates uh, online, uh, I normally when I ask retailers, how, what's roughly the e-commerce conversion rate today? Anyone know? Most, do I hear 10%? No way. Okay, so 2%, something like 2% global. Uh, furniture is a little bit less, electronics perhaps a little bit high, but that's very low conversion rate. 98 people out of 800 don't buy eventually. And when I ask retailers why don't they buy, uh, so it could be I want the product now, I want to go to the store and buy it. Could be security issues, but those are disappearing. And one of the major things is actually people want to see the products and they want to know it fits. Uh, so for example, just something I saw the other uh, like two weeks ago, uh, one of the largest uh, e-commerce uh, groups in Israel, uh, they try to, they have their theory. And the most important thing in order to succeed in e-commerce for their, at least what they think, is actually to provide good illustrations of how products would look like. And eventually to make people feel more comfortable and drive conversion rate uh, to generate more sales and remove barriers from e-commerce, uh, if you could visualize. Uh, by the way, the same thing happens in the store. We saw a solution for the sales associates to actually be able to show consumers uh, products in the store or uh, for their customers. Um, again, if you look, uh, the greatest excuse that the, that the shopper has actually not to make a purchase is, I like the product, but I wanna go home and try to imagine how it would look like. So we're trying to use um, basically augmented reality. We really think it helps to visualize how things uh, would look like in the people's home, in the people's offices. Uh, and first of all, it's engaging because people actually get to play with products and hopefully we'll be able to show you a demo later on. Um, but uh, so it's engaging, it's a good marketing tool, but again, it's more importantly, uh, it should increase uh, confidence and grow sales eventually. Now, 
augmented reality has been, uh, it's been there for a while. Uh, and people have tried using it also for what I've just described, home and office goods, furniture, electronic appliances, etc. But it didn't reach ma mass market yet. So some of, uh, some of uh, so perhaps we can go to the sales associates as has already been described. We, th we still f believe in the end user eventually because we really help the consumer in making decisions. But in order to get to the masses, we believe that the solution, such solutions ha has to be immediate. So people will click on a button, they will see the product that they want to buy. Uh, and you know where people want to get the scale and want to uh, have the product stay where it's supposed to be when the product is moving in augmented reality, uh, they're using a tracker or a marker, depends, uh, or a target, depends on your, uh, the SDK that you are using. In our case, we developed an in-house technology in order to eliminate the need for that. So you push a button and, uh, and you see the product. So it has to be immediate and it has to be realistic, as already been mentioned. It has to look real and it has to look real. In, and for example, if I put a chair on a t uh, somewhere on the floor, or if I put uh, a coffee machine on the counter and I start moving around to see it from different angles, it should stay exactly where I put it, as, just as if I would have put a real product over there. So it has to be immediate, realistic, high quality, and it has to be of a live video to be able to be, to be seen from various angles, just as if I would look at it if it was a real product that I'm trying on. Now, on the retailer side, and you can guess by now that we're, we had a B2B model, that's the way we work, uh, it has to be, everything has to be in the cloud. And our approach, by the way, is that we want to take all the burden from the retailer. Uh, we just, uh, so all we need to know is what are the products that the customer wants to visualize, to, to, uh, to share with this um, audience, with the, the, the consumers. And we provide the 3D modeling. We have a scalable uh, model for that because I think it's too cumbersome for the retailers to handle it themselves. Uh, and all we need basically from the retailers, other than the names of the product and some photography and measurements that we can usually find on the web pages, uh, is uh, some kind of a trigger, like a button on a web page that will tell us who the retailer is and it will fire up the application with the right product and, and also download some related items. Uh, and we also uh, we think that the solution, in order to be appealing for retailers, has to be not only when the consumer is at home trying how things would look like, but also that the consumer could actually take some photos of his home uh, with some metadata that we collected when we scanned the room take it to the store and make purchase decision, decisions in the store. So the solution has to be omni-channel in order to be uh, appealing for the, uh, the retailers. And obviously, when this is kind of fun, not just, uh, not just for creating confidence and engagement. And so people should have the ability to share what they're looking at and ask, seek advice. And by, that one, by, by doing so, also spread the word and let other consumers play with the products of the retailer in their, their space and perhaps generate even more sales. So, just an example. So that is really to scan the world, try to understand what we're looking at, and actually project uh, the product, change the colors, and then make a purchase decision. You can actually buy from the application itself. Or save it for later use and show it to your wife or for your spouse, share it with your friends. But it has to be very simple, eventually. And before I do a live demo, uh, what, uh, I want to summarize with, with what, what I tell retailers when I meet retailers and I think everybody understand when the whole devices with augment software, with, with all my colleagues here, uh, people understand that this is where the market is going. And what we're basically encouraging them to, to, join, to join now and become leaders. And it's a challenge. There's, we all have to educate the market, I guess. But it's something that's going to happen. It's going to happen pretty fast. We really believe in that. So let's see uh, if we can switch to this one. So now you should be able to see my screen. Uh, let's say this is just a demo, nothing official. So let's say this is a website. Uh, basically, what we ask the, the retailers just to put this button, the visualize button over there. When you push the button, it fires up uh, like a pop-up that can be customized. I'm oh, sorry. And when you push the visualize button, actually it fires up Simagine. Ask to direct to the desired location. 
you know, we're scanning the environment, we're trying to understand what we're looking at, and then we project the, the product over here. Now, I, it's kind of pale, I don't like this color actually. I can still move it in the environment, and the lovely thing is that I can actually go, as long as this cable allows me, and see the, the, see the fabric and see everything here, and I can switch it to see related items. I like this one, okay? So I can move it anywhere in the room, again, change the color, and again, really, the idea is really just as if it was a real product, uh, it has to stay exactly where I put this. Now I can save the scene, which is kind of nice. Hey, look at it, guys, take a look. I know one minute is up. So we can save the scene, and we can actually uh, later on share it, for example, via email, or directly to Facebook, etc. So you get all the scene, you see how the product would look like, and you can actually get a link to actually try it yourself. Uh, so I'm gonna stop here, there is much more to show, and you're welcome to see uh, a live that's interesting. Uh, you're welcome to see um, live demos if you like at, uh, at our booth downstairs. Um, thank you very much for having me. So we're behind schedule, but we have time for a couple of questions. Hi, what do you see as the major pain points uh, for this sort of technology to become very, very mainstream and to be used by everyone in daily, in daily use? So, so actually, I think this is what exactly what I, uh, what I mentioned. I think there were the two, mo the two uh, most important barriers is that it has to be immediate. And I mean, it's, it's realistic already, so, but it has to be immediate. So this is one thing. We spoke with a retailer with a company that uh, sells us about $2 billion in the States here, one of the largest ones. Uh, when we first talked with them, um, they said there are two, two challenges. One is the target. So I told them, ah, oh, guys, you're using Buforia. That's a terminology for the SDK of Buforia. Uh, so yeah, so one is the target, which means a piece of paper that you, you stop the user and saying, hey, stop buying, put something on the floor. Okay, so this is one major challenge. This is something we eliminated. Uh, so this is one thing. And the other thing is actually the 3D assets, uh, again, which was mentioned. And again, in, in this way, we believe that the way to go is actually to create whatever, to go on a B2B model, retailer by retailer, and actually build the, the 3D models for them. So to be available. So when the consumer comes and wants to buy something, he will have enough products to choose from. Because if he only has two chairs to, cho to choose from, from 2,000 chairs, I mean, what's the point? So those are the two key challenges, I believe, that we're trying to solve, and that's it. Yes? How do you create those 3D assets? So modeling, basically. Uh, so basically, same as you described, I think. So we, can, uh, we have all abilities. You can buy them for, like in IKEA, everything is available online, but not for everyone. Uh, we can send scanners, you know, people with laser scanners, and in the future, there's gonna be like the nice Kinect scanners, and then our smartphones, but it will take time. Fastest thing is actually in to model them in low-cost geographies, very scalable, uh, works like a magic. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Enjoy you, the rest of the day. So that wraps up this session. In this room at 1130 will be AR for marketing and brands. If you want to come back and stay on the business track, otherwise the tech track is happening across